Um, Harry, who do you think is the target audience for Yahoo's new uh, messaging app? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of competitors out there. I kind of associate Yahoo Mail with being very big outside the U.S. Do you think they're hoping uh, it's big in the U.S. or or elsewhere? Well, like the immediate audience basically is people who are Yahoo users. Um, it's built into Yahoo Mail as well as being a standalone app. So if you're a Yahoo Mail user, you, you can use it. And the people who you'll be talking to are other people who are still a little bit Yahoo centric. Um, but the new, the new app, I mean, it does have some cool new features in terms of being able to share high res photos and do a like like you can in Twitter um, for any comment and also to erase any comment you've ever done. But a lot of what they did was they, they ripped out the old plumbing uh, that had, in some cases, been around since the 1990s. And they replaced it with something that's a lot more robust. And they're trying to prep themselves for the, the next era of messaging. Um, one of the most highly evolved messaging apps is WeChat, which is huge in China. And there, it's it's like a platform for getting customer service. You can use it to call a cab. Um, it's a center for listening to entertainment. And that's starting to happen with, with apps that are more widely used here, such as Facebook Messenger. And Yahoo hopes to get in on that. And um, Jeff Bonfort, who's the, the Yahoo senior vice president in charge of this, told me that stats show that, that people are comfortable having up to four messaging apps on their phone. And he feels like Yahoo at least has a decent shot of being one of those four. We are number four. That's, that's a good uh, goal. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned that, um, that this version incorporates Cool Iris technology. Can you talk about sure. what that's all about? Sure. Cool Iris is a, a startup that was around for quite a while. And... Um, the trademark thing they started out was uh, quite a while ago was they, they let you create this 3D wall of photos and the photos could whiz by incredibly quickly and it never got bogged down. So they were really good at, at optimizing photos and other things and, and making something that was dependent on the web but didn't feel like it was slowly dragging data off of the internet. And um, Yahoo acquired them about a year ago and, and the folks who did Cool Iris were responsible for a lot of the architecture of the new Yahoo Messenger. And basically it's storing a lot of stuff locally on your device and then syncing it up to the web as it can. And that's why um, if, if you send a photograph, you immediately see a low res version and the higher res version trickles down. And if you're somewhere with a spotty connection, like, like on a subway car um, and you send a message and at the moment you send it, connectivity is, is bad, it will just sync it back up when uh, it gets back online. Um, so it's a fairly sophisticated architecture. Now, Harry, um, I, I was just chatting with Kashmir behind the scenes here, and she was bringing up the issue of encrypted messaging. Is this how secure is this app? Do you think? You know, we didn't talk about that specifically. Uh, this is a really good issue, um, and um, that's certainly not what they're putting the emphasis on when, when they're talking about what's new with it. All right, before I let you go, I want to ask you about uh, there are a lot of rumors and reports flying around about Yahoo and what may happen to the company, including that they may sell their core Internet business, which I think is really confusing to a lot of people. Do you have any thoughts on those reports? Well, given that it's Yahoo, those rumors resurface a lot. Um, like it, it seems like it's a pretty regular thing for that to happen. Um, the, the big weird thing about Yahoo is they invested years ago in Alibaba which is a Chinese internet giant. And that was such a brilliant investment that the vast majority of Yahoo's value is determined by the stock market is that investment. And it, it leaves the core business, such as all of the Yahoo sites and Messenger and Yahoo Mail, worth very, very little. And that's an issue they have to deal with. And they thought they were gonna deal with that by spinning out their Alibaba stake into a separate company and that looked like it had a lot of tax advantages, but then the IRS told them that they can't depend on that being a, t a tax free deal. So um, I, don't, I don't expect anything to happen with Yahoo immediately just because, um, you know, for many, many years, Yahoo has been a company where there's always been a fair amount of uncertainty. And this is, feels more like the latest round than signs that doomsday is about to happen. I hear sirens. That may, be, uh, that may be the fire department going to put out a fire at Yahoo as we speak, so you never know. Harry McCracken is at fastcompany.com, technologizer.com, and you can find him on Twitter at Harry McCracken. Harry, thanks for uh, joining us today. Thanks so much, folks. Bye-bye.